purpose of the legend is to identify the meaning of symbols on the map that are not intuitively obvious. So in this case, we have the number of red and green attack Douglas fir, where red attack is a tree that has been infested and killed by the Douglas fir beetle, and green attack is a tree that has been infested but has not yet died. So it is in the process of dying, it will not survive, but there are insects currently inside it, and that is a candidate for current management action. So with that in mind, these are four buckets of dates. So we have helicopter survey data from 2008 through 2014, and the helicopter surveyors were leaning out the window and seeing between one and five or all the way up to greater than 50 individual trees either killed or infested by the Douglas fir beetle. So those are definitely not obvious. Those need to be in a legend. Something like this, Knife Creek, DWL 50. This is a deer wintering area. This is deer wintering area number 50, named Knife Creek. And the audience of this map understands what that is. These, this map was produced for the people who manage the deer wintering yards, so they know that. That does not need to be in any legend. Cummings Lake. I'll give you three guesses what that is. That's a lake. We do not need to have lakes labeled here in the legend. These blue features, the blue feature, even if it's not labeled, is obviously a lake. These blue line features are also obviously not lakes. They're quite clearly rivers. So we, again, do not need to have them in our legend. They are intuitively obvious to any reasonable observer of this map. The only thing that's not clear is what these points mean. So that's why they have a legend. So let's go through how to reproduce this legend. And the first really important thing to understand is that whatever is here in the table of contents will appear here in the legend. So 1 to 5, that's just text. I can put anything there. And now anything is in my legend. So that is completely up to you what it says. This 20 th 2013 through 2014, I could put anything there. And anything is now the header in the legend. I could delete all of that text. And now it removes that entire header from the legend itself. That's definitely not what we want, so let's put that back. And that was 2013 through 2014. And now it's back. So to reproduce this legend, insert legend. Now we have all these different map layers that could potentially be in our legend. Let's see how messy that is if we just accept all these defaults. And then we'll go back and fix it later. There's our legend. It goes on and on and on and on. So this is very definitely not what we want. So let's double click on this. Double clicking on the legend opens up its properties. So we have all this stuff that we don't want. So to remove stuff from the legend, go to the general tab in legend properties. Select one. You can use that button to put it back or if you hold down shift or control, you can do them all that way. If you want to move everything over at once, you can do that. Move everything back. Hold down control, click, click, click. Move just those four over. All right, apply. Let's see what we have now. So that has the information that we want. But we want to have this in four columns, not one. So let's double click here. And we want to go into the items tab. And for every one of these, we have our four items. And we're going to say place each one of these in a new column. 
So if we do that for one, now we have two, but that second column keeps running on. So that one wants to be in a new column. And that one wants to be in a new column. Now, we've got all the information we want, but we don't have the aesthetic layout that we want. Double click again. First, we have the default text legend rather than the number of red and green attack at each point. Let's go back to the general tab and fix that. And the title defaults to legend. We could uncheck that box and not show any title at all. We'll just type in whatever we want. Number of red and green attack attach at each point. There it is. Capitalization. There we go. And now we would like to have a white background and this three line border around it. That's under frame. The border. I'm going to make this triple graded. And the background we're going to make white. Apply. And now this does not look like that. And the reason why is we don't have any margins set around this legend, or a gap, they're calling it here. Let's make the gap five points. We'll do that for both the background and the border. There it is. Now there's space. And we could nitpick that. We could say we want to have four. That's a little bit more room than we want. There, yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, so now you will notice that we don't actually have any of this text. It's not reading this text from over here and putting it here. The reason for that is the style is trying to read a heading rather than the layer name. So this layer has no heading. It's just the layer name. So let's try a layer name and label. Good, now it's reading that in. We have to do this for each one of these in turn, or we can select all, style, apply, and there it is. So now that's reading off from the table of contents. Put in weird text and weird things happen. You can change the size of the text. So let's change the size of the title, change the symbol, and we'll make that size 14. So that is how to create and edit a legend. There's many different things that you can do with a legend. It's, uh, there's a learning curve to this. There's a lot of options that are buried. We'll learn that with time. But that is the basic connection between the table of contents and the legend.